My name is John Allure, and I'm here with uh, our co-author, Patricia Pearson, and we've written the book, Wish You Were Here, about a series of unsolved murders in Canada in the 1970s, most significantly the murder, unsolved murder of my sister, Teresa Allure. Teresa was a student at Champlain College in the eastern townships of Quebec in the fall of 1978. She had newly arrived there that fall and had been there for about two months. And on November 3rd, 1978, she disappeared. And five and a half months later, her body turned up um, next to a highway in Compton, Quebec. In the book, Wish You Were Here, Patricia and I embarked on investigating the, the cold case of my sister. It's been a cold case for going on, we're approaching 43 years now. Um, and so the book is an investigation, not only of her unsolved murder, but also the unsolved murders of uh, a number of uh, Quebec cold cases from that era. I think one of the things that John and I both realized in researching what was happening in the late 1970s and also in the early 90s, which are the two periods we were looking at, is that the police don't function from a human rights perspective. They're primarily interested, or they were in those periods, primarily interested in, in property, basically, in solving robberies, in solving big political cases, um, kidnappings. There were a lot of kidnappings going on at that time for money. Um, so their sense of, of what to do to protect women um, from sexual violence was very, very um, muted. In fact, it was almost completely absent. Like they just literally didn't investigate rape. So we came across woman after woman after woman after woman who would literally go to the police and say, I have been sexually assaulted. And the police would say, okay, see ya. And they would do nothing, literally nothing about these cases. So, you know, have we come some way in terms of making a dent into that misogynistic indifference to women's plight? I would like to hope so. I think having more women on police forces probably has to help. And I think that, um, you know, more of a, a sort of trained um, focus on the sensitivities around what it means to be violated, to be sexually assaulted, um, is gonna make a difference in terms of how these things are investigated. But there's a lot of work left to be done, I think. And John may have some insight into that because he's been following more closely than I have what's going on now. Can we learn from the past? Are there parallels? today with conversations going on about policing? Yes, I mean, most certainly. Particularly in, in Quebec, the police force were not really interested in marginalized women in the 70s and, and in terms of a parallel. Absolutely. Um, very early in the year when, when, when we were, when, when our heads really wrapped around this project, someone told me, you know, you need to read more right now. And one of the first book, books I picked up, I went to the local library here in North Carolina and picked up uh, Jessica McDermott's book, The Highway of Tears, and I, and I read that and devoured that because th there, was, there were so many parallels between this, particularly the theme of dealing with a, an obstinate police force. The, the phrase is overused now, gaslighting. Um, unfortunately, but it's something that Patricia and I very early on talked about, sort of the, the gaslighting of, of victims into believing in these authority figures. Um, and that's certainly a case, I would say mostly with my father, you know, when he, there's a lot in the book that goes into what is sort of over time, it's really three investigations. It's my, in the book, it's my, it's my father's initially, and then it's handed off to my elder brother, and then it becomes mine. And um, to this day, it takes a lot of breaking down barriers for me to really knock down those walls of, to, to say to my father, who's of a completely different generation, you know, in his 80s, to say that you should, you know, really not trust these figures. Now, he wasn't completely naive, 
I, I think I think from his perspective, he was dealing with a bad investigator, and it might have been well if I if I just had the right guy, things would be better. And initially, I had that belief. It's like I just got to find the super cop, you know, who will <laughs> solve my problems. And eventually, I mean, I think my family now is is on. There was no super cop. There were just a series of. I think I'm on my fifteenth. I'll call them police handler now. Um, and it was really a case of um, you're on your own. I, you know, I really naively believed when Patricia and I worked on the National Post articles, you know, over 18 years ago, that from that someone was going to come forward and go and be a champion. And then, then when it didn't happen, you know, the slow realization that, that, you know, which is ironic because, you know, when my, when my parents, and it's in, it's also in the book, when my parents embarked to Quebec from St. John, New Brunswick, they met with the RCMP for advice. And the guy said to him, you're going to Quebec, you're going to be on your own. That proved very prescient for, for our circumstances. I would say in all of this, it has always been the case that we've been on our own. So it's been a continuing pressing for 18 years. It's like, okay, you, you don't believe me? Um, and a lot of criticism of being a squeaky wheel, right? You just, you're so over focused. And it was like, okay, fine. I'll stop focusing on Teresa. Let's discuss all these 10 or 20 other cases that all have parallels. Of, of evidence destruction, of bad police investigation. And then when you throw that at them, they say, all right, we'll start a cold case bureau. And you say, you're not adding enough people fast enough. Okay, we've added everybody you want. Now are you satisfied? No, sir, I'm not satisfied. So it kind of went on and on and on to the point where after two decades, you begin to assimilate the process I would not use the word obsess about the process. It just becomes part of you to all of a sudden you wake up one day and you're no longer gaslit. You've become the investigator.